to episode 42 of the Naked Eye podcast. This is Nathan Oxenfeld coming to you today in the middle of July 2020. And today I'm joined by Esther Joy Vanderberg, who is a natural vision teacher based in California and also the co-host of the Better Eyesight podcast, the other podcast other than this one. And uh, we're actually celebrating our sort of one year anniversary of the Better Eyesight podcast. So welcome to the, the show, Esther. Uh, welcome back to the show. And uh, I'm excited to just have a quick little chat with you about our awesome project we've been working on. Yay. Thanks, Nathan. Yes, it's it's been a fantastic project so far, hasn't it? Yeah. First, yeah. first year done out of 11. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just put a post up, you know, one one down, 10 to go, because it's, it's an 11 year, you know, spanning an 11 year project, the, the podcast there. So do um, you want to just give a quick little explanation of, of what it is and why we're doing it at this time in particular? Yes. So Better Eyesight was a magazine published by Dr. Bates himself back in the 1900s, exactly 100 years ago. And it was actually your idea, Nathan, to turn it into a podcast. And I'm really grateful you thought of it because it's such a, a wonderful project. And it's, it's, I find it's very beneficial to the people listening, to the people taking part too, because we as teachers, we don't always, you know, read these articles in, in depth. And, and this is kind of helping us do that and rereading them. I've read all of them multiple times, but even this time, going over it again, it's, it's like it's, it's refreshing the memory of, of things Bates did, which is so helpful in our practice. So um, these magazines helped people 100 years ago, and they're still helping people now. And, and getting them into audio format is so precious. And to do it with so many colleagues and, and people listening in and thanking us for it, it's such a pleasure to do, yes. Yeah, I mean, you know, audiobooks have been getting more and more popular and, you know, that is kind of a benefit of, of being able to just listen to this stuff without even having to, to use your eyes to read it, <laughs> you know, right. uh, but it has been cool to, you know, provide people with the, the printed version of it and, and people are reading it and listening to it and thinking about it because we haven't just made this into a, a show for people to listen to. We've also created a little community around it and we've sort of restarted the better eyesight league, which was an actual group of people back in New York in about a hundred years ago, um, actually meeting up and getting together in person and discussing all these natural vision improvement things. And so now we're recreating that in, in the 21st century with the help of technology and the internet to help us connect with people all over the world. So it's been, yeah, really cool to just kind of get this material out there um, in this new way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, we've got 10 more years to go. So this is a perfect time to still join. I think the, the first year of the magazine had a lot of um, the information from Dr. Bates's book, his 1920 book, Perfect Sight Without Glasses. Um, but in the next few years, it's, it's going to be more new material. And we also see the involvement of Dr. Bates's work mm -hmm. as, as he learned more over this whole decade that's coming up. And it's represented in the magazines. He gets better at explaining it and he goes into different techniques and, it's, and other people join in. And, and, you know, like we have guest teachers. He had guest article writers. Mm -hmm. And um, so we get a lot of different points of view. Um, and a lot of testimonials and a lot of advice on how to do it yourself. It's, it's awesome material. Yeah. I mean, if people really like take what they're learning from the podcast episodes and apply it, I mean, they can actually experience this stuff and they can actually see changes in their vision for the better and, you know, maybe even achieve healthier eyes and, and clearer eyesight naturally. I mean, that's the, the name of the show is Better Eyesight. And so mm -hmm. that's really our, our goal. And we're not just here to talk about it. We really want to help people, you know, achieve that and experience that. So, and yeah, just the fact that it's, it's not just you and me doing it, but all, you know, all these other teachers that we've already gotten involved and we're starting to get even more people involved in the, in the show, just to let people hear different voices and different opinions. Cause um, we are archiving these articles. We're just reading them word for word as they were published a hundred years ago. But then in between the articles, we get to just talk about it and discuss it. And 
come up with some more modern examples of our vision students and our experience with it too. So yeah, it's cause some, some of the original material is sometimes a little difficult to, to get immediately. And so just to hear it in a new different way can help it absorb uh, in, a, in a good way. So. Yep. And, and the advantage of the different teachers, I like that too. And we have got some new ones lined up for the rest of this year and the coming year. So we have uh, more voices that are joining in. And uh, it's, it's just such a wonderful project. <laughs> I'm really happy that you, you came up with the idea and I'm, I'm really happy with how much it's helping people already. And so it's, I'm excited for the next year and actually the next decade <laughs> and how this is going to keep evolving and getting bigger and bigger and better and better. It's, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I've, I've never taken on such a long-term uh, project like this before, so it's, it's equally uh, daunting but also super exciting just to kind of see, you know, how we can accomplish this and, and what's going to come from it. So yeah. definitely uh, we appreciate everybody who's already been listening and, and subscribing and participating, uh, and we just are encouraging you to do more of that, you know, sharing this with, with your friends and family, letting people know that this exists and, and that it's out there and that we're, we're here to, to help you understand how it all works and, and really make it easy to make this a part of your life. And whether you're subscribing to the free version, uh, you know, on any podcast app or at our website, bettereyesightpodcast.com, or actually taking it to the next level and becoming a Patreon member at uh, patreon.com slash better eyesight. You can get the full episodes and the PDFs of the articles and even join Esther and I and the other teachers once a month for a Zoom call to discuss these things in depth. And, uh, and there's even an option to have one-on-one -on -one sessions with vision teachers as well. So lots of different ways to get involved. And, and yeah, even though we've been at it for a year, it's like Esther said, it's not too late to, to, to join in and, and subscribe. You know, it's not necessarily a, a chronological thing. I would encourage people to go back and listen to all these, you know, you know, starting at episode one, but uh, there's a lot of material to learn. Yeah, and it's not necessary to go back to one because Dr. Bates does repeat a lot. Mm -hmm. And I think if you just join in now or, or sometime in the near future, you'll get incredible amounts of valuable material that you, know, you won't really miss out too much. But it, it's, you know, it's such great you know, archive material available. If you want to delve into that, that's fantastic. And you don't... As a, as a listener, you don't have to make the 10-year commitment for the next decade. If you did just a year, you'd already get so much out of it, I believe. And, you know, just go long enough for you to reach your own clarity. That would be awesome. <laughs> and, uh, write your testimonial about it then and become one of the many, many success cases that, you know, the Bates Method has. I love that idea of, of this notion that, you know, you we're giving you a 10-year window here <laughs> to improve your vision and you know it's not going to take that full 10 years i mean you might just listen to the show for yeah, a year or less and, and get some changes and improvements and and then you may not need to listen to the show anymore because you've <laughs> you've gotten it to work for you but there's there's going to be just a ton of amazing you know additional materials and you know e even esther and i might be a little different we might be a little more you know into this stuff in general, but even once our vision got better, we, we continued to study this and learn about it and, you know, teach it and share it. And so, yeah. And yeah. I've been, I've been doing this 20 years and I still keep learning. It's, yeah. it's, it's a never ending process and it's beautiful. So, and, and if you find that, you know, as a listener, you've, you've got to great eyesight and you're happy, you don't need it anymore. Just pass the knowledge on to somebody else and tell them about this podcast because we'll still be there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, what I'd love to do just to give people a little preview of, of the better eyesight podcast is we're going to, I'm going to switch over and play uh, my recording of last month's uh, article called the mission of better eyesight. It was from, it was from June, 1920 an article by Dr. William Bates, pretty much, him having this kind of one year checkpoint of like, Hey, we've been putting out these, these publications for a year now. And these were our goals. Then where these are our goals moving forward. Um, so I think it just does a good job of kind of summarizing this whole project that, that you and I are doing and, and the other teachers as well. And then it'll cut 
after the article, it'll cut to uh, Gloria and I's discussion of that article because she was our guest last month. And, uh, and you and I are getting ready to do some recordings for the next month's episode as well. So people can uh, anticipate that for coming out on August 1st and it's the school edition, right? So as, as yep. kids are getting ready to be going back to school in one way or another <laughs> uh, <laughs> this year, yes. um, it's going to be a lot of really powerful information. You know, if you've got kids or if you're a teacher, so. Yeah. And even if you're homeschooling, this, yeah. this is worthwhile. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So thanks for, for joining me today, Esther. And hopefully uh, everybody will, get over and, and check out the better eyesight podcast and get to know you better and me better and Dr. Bates better and the whole method better. So. And their own eyes better. Mm. <laughs> totally. Yes. Thanks, Nathan. Have fun. I'll see you soon. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. Article two, the mission of better eyesight with this number, better eyesight enters upon its second year. It was started in July 1919 for the purpose of diffusing a knowledge of the truth about central fixation, and it has accomplished all that was hoped for it. It has carried the message that errors of refraction are curable to thousands of people, and many of these people have been able to cure these conditions in themselves and others solely by means of the information which it has contained. The magazine is modest in its appearance. One can get many times the amount of reading matter which it contains at any newsstand for the same money. But the value of truth cannot be estimated by the number of words required to state it. And it is the object of the editor to give the public the truth about central fixation as briefly and simply as possible. The truth can usually be stated briefly and simply. It is error which is hard to understand and which requires a multitude of words for its presentation. The editor believes that no one who values his or her eyesight can afford to be without this magazine. It has a message not only for those whose sight is imperfect, but for those whose sight is normal. No one, however good his sight may ordinarily be, has perfect sight all the time. No one has as good sight as he might have. Therefore, everyone can be benefited by practicing the principles presented in this magazine. While persons with imperfect sight may thus gain normal vision, persons with so-called normal sight can always improve it and may even double the accepted standard of normality or gain a measure of telescopic or microscopic vision. It is not a good thing to be satisfied with just normal sight. Not only is keen sight a great convenience, but it reflects a condition of mind which reacts favorably upon all the other senses, upon the general health, and upon the mental faculties. Even the blind can get some help from better eyesight. Not all blind persons are curable. But the editor believes that an increasing number of blind persons may expect help from central fixation, for already it has been found possible to relieve or cure such conditions as cataract, glaucoma, conical cornea, retinitis pigmentosa, cyclitis, opacities of the cornea, and atrophy of the optic nerve. The magazine will continue to publish during the coming year as it has in the past. The latest discoveries of the editor, the experiences of cured patients, which have proven to be very valuable, and practical instructions for the improvement of the eyesight. On page two of each issue, we will continue to give specific directions for self-treatment in language as simple as possible, so that persons who are not physicians can understand it we have had much testimony to the value of this page, and the editor strongly urges every subscriber, no matter what the condition of his or her eyesight, to demonstrate these truths as they appear. Better eyesight stands for a revolution in the treatment of eye troubles, 
and has had to meet the difficulties that always beset the path of the revolutionist. For 75 years, we have believed that errors of refraction, by which is meant the inability of the eye to focus light rays accurately upon the retina, were due to organic and irremediable causes. The editor of Better Eyesight has proved that these troubles are functional and curable, that the elongated eyeball of myopia, short sight, the flattened eyeball of hypermetropia, far sight, and the lopsided eyeball of astigmatism can be made to resume their normal shape, temporarily in a few minutes and more continuously by further treatment. The world has been slow to receive this message. The editor is practically alone in advocating central fixation. A small number of physicians, including a few eye specialists, who have been cured or seen members of their families cured of eye troubles without glasses, operations, or medication, have been convinced that the old theories about the eye and the treatment of defects of vision are wrong but very few have had courage to endorse the new treatment publicly. This is not to be wondered at, and is not a cause for discouragement. The editor now wonders at his own slowness in seeing the truth. The facts conquered his conservatism at last only because they were irresistible, and for the same reason they must ultimately conquer all conservatism. Physicians and others who refuse to accept them, or even to investigate them, will be swept aside to make room for those of more open mind. In the meantime, better eyesight needs friends. It needs encouragement. It needs subscribers. The editor appeals to present subscribers to continue their support and to advertise whenever and wherever they have an opportunity The good news that the eye is not a blunder of nature, as the textbooks teach, but an instrument as perfectly adapted to the needs of civilized man as to those of the savage. Persons who have cured themselves should utilize every opportunity to improve the sight of relatives and friends. All parents should be told that they have it in their power to prevent and cure defects of vision in their children, and at the same time to improve their health and increase their mental efficiency. The same message should be carried to teachers and school boards. The blind should be told of this new hope for the sightless, and societies for the blind should be urged to investigate it. If everyone who has demonstrated the truth of central fixation does his or her duty in the matter, defective eyesight will soon cease to be, as it has so long been, the curse of civilization. Okay, thanks Nathan for reading that article. Really appreciate it. It certainly really, really do need supporters of better eyesight, don't we? Yeah, and you know, a hundred years ago, it's kind of neat seeing him asking for subscribers. You know, it's kind of a different type of subscriber now. We're, we're you know, trying to grow this podcast, looking for podcast subscribers. And 100 years ago, it was this actual publication being circulated and, and people were, you know, paying to get copies of it, you know, mailed to them or, or picked up there. So, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of neat just to see how this all started one year ago with in July of 1919 slash 2019 and uh and just kind of taking stock of like here's what we've accomplished here's what we want to keep seeing happening moving forward well he it's you know it, it's it's amazing to me poor dr Bates. i mean he you could see that he really thought that by the time he died that this would be the accepted way of dealing with vision problems that it would be established he worked in the schools he, he went he just why of course you know how to fix vision why wouldn't you just do it and yeah. so to, 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 to come to the end of life and realize that it was far from far from that. Here we are a hundred years later and it's still not established the established way of dealing with vision problems. We have a way of fixing vision and yet people are using these crutches instead. 
yeah, it, it, it must have been really, really frustrating. But I also am just so glad he never gave up, you know, like, like, like you said in, in the article, like, this is not to be wondered at. And it's not a cause for discouragement. You know, it's like, how amazing just like, how much drive he had originally just to really see this through, even if the world wasn't listening, you know, that's right. And uh, hopefully more and more people are listening now, but, but yeah, it's, it's pretty wild how we're still, still working on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, like a lot of things, you know, it takes time to break through old society patterns. <laughs> yeah. And he even highlights that within himself. Like I, I liked that sort of humble statement he said of like, <clears throat> I kind of wonder at my own slowness and seeing the truth. Like I, I can't believe it took me so long to <laughs> come around to this stuff too, but you know, for the entire ophthalmological industry to come around, that's, that's kind of a different, different story. Yeah. Well, he, he was a medical doctor, so he came from a conservative background, but, but he, he had such an open mind. It's so rare to find that combination where it was so open where he, when he saw results that just sort of were different than what he experienced, he, he actually, he sort of studied them. He went out and he, he found out, well, what's going on here? And, and maybe there is some way to actually fix vision. And, and he researched it. He didn't just sort of push it aside. And that's rare to find someone willing to, to do that. Yeah. And I think that is kind of the, the key here, right? Is just that open-mindedness. And, and that's kind of what he mentions in the article too, of like, you know, eventually the whole, this whole scene will be full of more open-minded people, you know, ready to, to just keep exploring these really fascinating questions and, and case histories and unexplained things, you know, from the conventional standpoint. And yeah, just really keep evolving our, our understanding of this amazing eye organ and the whole phenomenon of vision that's just so, so profound. And, and we're continuing to learn more and more every day. Yeah. Sometimes I have people that ask me, you know, I have friends that I mentioned this to, and, and they say, how can you possibly improve eyesight? And I said, how could you possibly not improve eyesight? Of course, if your vision is gets worse, it's, it can obviously change. It can obviously get better. You just have to reverse engineer this whole thing, you know, go, go backwards, figure out what you're doing wrong and reverse it. But it's, 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 uh, it, yeah. So it's, he was, um, anyway, the, the idea of, of getting, of establishing this whole better eyesight sort of campaign is really what he was doing with this article, it seems to me. Yeah, he, yeah, I mean, there are, it almost, there are elements of it that is very kind of, uh, you know, just motivational speaking and inspiration and like, you know, come on board with me, like, we're, we're going at this together, like, don't, don't, don't miss the boat, you know, we're, we're going into this together. And and it's kind of an inspiring read to just be like, get, get you excited about the possibility here. Yeah. It's a mission to him. It's like the mission yeah. It's called the mission of better eyesight. We, we have a mission to, to change, you know, the way that, that we, we deal with vision problems and, and to, to stop crippling children and putting glasses on them when they have vision problems and teach them how to see instead. That's, that's, it's, he certainly had a life mission. For sure. For sure. And and I love how the word mission and vision can be kind of interchangeable in terms of like the other, one of the other understandings of vision beyond eyesight is just having like a really clear vision of the future. And, exactly. and I think that that's, you know, what made Dr. Bates a leader in this, you know, a pioneer in this whole holistic approach is like, Hey, I've, I've seen the, the traditional explanation, but I see this greater vision beyond that because I see all these shortcomings with the glasses and the contacts. Well, they didn't have contacts back then, but the surgeries and the medications and like, and yeah, that's, that's here. But like, I'm seeing beyond that to this other option that, you know, I think that's really the drive that pushed him to keep going with this stuff of like, I'm not going to stop until I see this vision come true. And, you know, I think that that's kind of what, what really defines a really good leader, you know, a strong leader in this. So and you need a visionary to, to, to change a, something so fundamental as, as a concept like that, that that's stuck in people's minds. And, and he certainly was extremely beyond his time. You know, Unfortunately, yeah. a lot of great inventors, a lot of great forward, forward-thinking people are not recognized in their lifetime, but afterwards. And, uh, so we can look back 100 years later and say, oh, so glad that you 
documented all this all these work and and published this information and, and started the ball rolling by teaching people and they teaching people and, and starting those lineages of, of teachers. Yeah, like like uh, Margaret Corbett's book titled, you know, Help Yourself to Better Sight. I just love, that just reminds me of like an all you can eat buffet, you know? It's like, hey, everybody come just like help yourself. Like, <laughs> like and don't, don't only help yourself, help your friends and your family. I mean, it's like, yeah you know, free for all, just like this can help so many people. And in this article even brings up like, even people, some blind people can have some benefit from learning central fixation. I, I love how like, that that's how he frames this whole, the mission of better eyesight is just to diffuse the knowledge of the truth of central fixation. Exactly. You know, I love how that is just like the one thing that just shines through everything. Mm -hmm. And it's like, mm -hmm. that's all this whole magazine is about. And look at all these different ways we can explain it and explore it and how people are benefiting from it even people who are you know blind not all people who are blind but you know it's interesting to explore what what potential things can come out of this stuff i had a i had a client who was a real uh, he was just really thrilled about his vision improvement and, and so he he had he went to college with a, a group of, of friends that when they grew up they had children and one of them had a daughter who was born deaf and blind and he he talked to her at one point in some kind of a, a get together and he said, do you want me to, um, to show you some vision things that you can do? And there, his, his mother, her mother is signing for her. She's like a foot away signing for her. So she, the girl can actually see enough to read the hands. Yeah. Um, but that's about it. And so she said, yes. And so he, next time he went up to visit his father in San Luis Obispo, he stopped by and he, he brought his shifter and he and he did this shifting with her he put her out in the sun and he did some shifting and um and she and for about 10 minutes and then he she looked around and this this girl's like she couldn't see more than a foot away just signing the hands and and she, her mother's 10 feet away and she's signing to her and she's and he's saying well what is it what do you experience she said the sky looks blue wow. <laughs> you know and uh, things, I see things on the tree, there's trees that kind of look like they do through these sort of telescopic lenses that the doctors had let her look through one time. Mm -hmm. And, um, and he said, well, that's great. You know, you, you can, this, that works. You can go down to LA this summer. You can go work with Gloria. And, you, and she said, oh, we can't do that. We have to go to the Helen Keller Institute this summer. He said, if you go see Gloria, you don't have to go to the Helen Keller Institute. <laughs> you know, but it was just, the the change he, he it was just within like 10 minutes she was seen better um yeah. a girl who was born deaf and blind technically right. and so it it really it can help so when you see such dramatic changes in such extreme cases you go well certainly somebody who's just having a little myopia or a little bit of presbyopia can fix their vision <laughs> i know it's it's and that's kind of the far end of the spectrum of like wow we can even potentially reverse something as serious as that. And then, and I love how even in this article, he even shows the other end of the spectrum of like, hey, even if you don't have any vision issues, you can still make it even better. Or you could maybe get even this microscopic vision or telescopic vision. It's like, there's, why are we putting these limits on ourselves, right? It's like, we have the potential to, to go beyond where, where we're experiencing right now. You know, if we just try some of these simple little things out, it's, yeah. You know, and that's, that's why I love that this is a, both a sort of a prevention and a reversal method. Um, and it really can benefit so many different people. Yep. That's, you nailed that's it. Awesome, that's an awesome <laughs> story though with, uh, Oh, I've seen so many people that were considered blind, you know, improve their vision. It's just really amazing. You know, uh, it, it yeah. makes you realize what's really possible. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's, <laughs> That and the children who are just having a little trouble, and you know, you've, I'm sure you've seen them, Nathan. Where, like, they palm for a few minutes, and oh, I can read this now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think this is. I love how in in this article he's really um, highlighting the whole page two concept. Yeah. So the fact that the very beginning of each magazine starts off with this really simple, practical suggestion or tip or practice. Mm -hmm. um, that people can really apply so that we're getting a combination of not only educating ourselves about the eye and the vision and the natural vision stuff, but we're also getting some hands-on, you know, Hey, here's like last month I was talking about the sunning and, you know, doing the palming and the swinging and all this stuff. And, and I remember, uh, 
reading Esther's compilation of these page two articles from yeah. the Medrash site. So you put out a book called Bates Method Nuggets. Oh, that's cool. And it's pretty much just an extraction of most of these page two articles yeah. from, from this whole series here. And it's like just all in order in a row. And it's just like really powerful little book there. And that, that kind of harkens back to what Bates was saying at the beginning of this of like, yeah, sure. You could get like a lot more words. You get a lot more bang for your buck in terms of like a longer magazine or articles, but the, the content of this stuff is so rich and so valuable. Yeah. Um, and yet it's so short and simple and sweet. <laughs> True. I, I actually learned a lot years years ago when I first started studying these better eyesights by taking the page twos and doing them in that way, going yeah. through each page two in succession. So it's really cool that somebody, you know, put that together. I, I also put together a thing of the questions and answers from the better eyesight magazines. I'll have to send that to you. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. yeah but, it, those are always great. I always, always they kind of crack me up of just how sometimes he even just gives like a one word answer. <laughs> Somebody asks this question, right, just right. like, nope. <laughs> exactly. Yes, no. <laughs> nope, you're straining. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I squint my eyes, does, and, and does that help my, my reading? Is like, no, don't do that. <laughs> Whatever. Right, yeah. yeah. Anyway, so cool. Cool. So, well, I, I'm really glad that, um, you know, although maybe, although 100 years after this article came out, maybe it hasn't been fully realized as uh, Bates was hoping, but at least we're here today kind of carrying on this mission and hopefully with this podcast we are really you know fulfilling some of these these desires here to keep spreading the word and and so hopefully as you were listening to that article you were say, thinking oh yeah maybe i could send this show to my coworker or my family member or something like just yeah help keep keep helping us spread the word and and uh and just help people know that it's possible <laughs> just just even just to know that it's possible just spread that word i know right yeah <laughs> Well, so why don't we go ahead and hear from Emily again in the next Stories from the Clinic.